time. I know who you truly are, but that's okay. I still want a relationship with you. You have lied, you have done all this, but guess what? It doesn't matter because I love you. Praise God. Praise Jesus that he wasn't scared of my sin. Praise Jesus that he wasn't scared of, of who I was. Right? And so I went. And so for the next two years, that's what I did. No, no longer drugs, no, no drugs, nothing like that. I still smoked cigarettes, but I figured it wasn't pot and that's okay. <laughs> And you know what? I didn't, it wasn't just boom, everything was done, shifted. It, God still accepted me and he still worked on me. And there were things that, that I, I did. And so for the next two years, for that was my junior year. It was, it was my junior year going into my senior year. And so for my senior year, I was known as the evangelist. Like I got the Billy Graham Award my senior year of our theater. Um, you know, end of year awards and things like that. The Billy Graham Award. You know, I, I loved Jesus then and I was a little more harsh <laughs> um, with things and I was a little bit more by the rules. And and it wasn't because I, I was wanting to judge. It was because I, I knew that there were things that I had to change. I didn't understand the full grace of everything yet. And I didn't understand his, his, his work yet. I, I was still... I understood that Jesus like died for me and, and because he died, I get to go to heaven. But, but as far as being here on this earth, like there were things that, that I was, I was, I was wanting to do and prove to him. Well, can't do that, <laughs> but I love Jesus and, and we kept going. So that was the end of, you know, my, my senior year, I go to college. I, I go to, I go to college for theater and, you know, theater can be um, an amazing world. I love theater. I love going to shows. I, I absolutely had the time of my life, and I learned so much. And, and praise God for the people that he put in my life because um, they cared for me and they loved me. And whenever I was away from home, they, they took care of me. And so I, I love them so much, and, and thank you for the people that he placed in my life. But theater is, is kind of a different world than, you know, where Jesus is. And so I got back into everything. I backslid. And not only did I backslide, I was like, peace out. I'm having a good time. Jesus, I'll catch you on the flip side. I'll see you later. It's college. Bye-bye. <laughs> and um, so I did. You know, I, drugs, sex, alcohol, everything. That's in 2002, uh, 2001, 2002. And so for the next, um, you know, from 2001, 2002 until... 2007, 2008, I go on this wild ride of just drugs, sex, anything in the world, but I was still a good dude, right? Like I, I still had a good time and, and I was still, you know, I still tried to love people because, well, remember there were seeds deposited in me and there were seeds of God still lingering, um, even though I was so far away from him and I wasn't. You know, it even got to one point where I would say I went through this atheist phase, this this at least this agnostic phase of of intelligence and you know reason, and I'm I'm gonna do this, and this is true, and everything else, and it was just a crazy time. Uh, but it's who I was, and at that point, it didn't it didn't matter. You know, spirituality again. I went back to you know, you're a good person, and and Buddhist, and, and all of this stuff from, from ag, you know, Christian to agnostic to atheist to, no, there, there's something there, I just don't know what, so, you know, let's try Buddhism, and, and let's try that, and, and Buddha was a good guy, and again, still nothing worked, <laughs> nothing was fulfilling, and I'm working as a bartender, and I get this job at a completely different atmosphere than um, Chili's. Yeah, I was a bartender at Chili's and I started working at Enterprise Rent a Car. And I got involved with some people and, and some different things, and my life is starting to turn as far as the drinking, partying, and everything. And I turn this way. And I'm sitting, this is going on for a couple of months, and 
I'll never forget. I guess it was 2008, 2009, sitting under my carport. I can't remember exactly. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, what's going on? And God just simply says, are you ready to come back to me yet? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I am. And so, so starts the journey of the next, well, until we're here today. And so from that point, again, I haven't been perfect and, and, and I'm not claiming to be perfect or anything like that. There's a, perf there's, there's a purification and there's a, that process that we get to go through. And he knows that. But from that day, I started seeking him and asking him and, and asking him to change my life. And so fast forward, takes away cigarettes from me. I don't, I don't drink anymore the way that I was. I don't like those things are, are done. Like completely cigarettes gone. Peace out. One day fell on my face. I'm not getting up. Jesus take it away. Gone. Never picked up a cigarette again. I just celebrated my four year anniversary of that. And then I go into my, there's a group of people that uh, I'm with and I get from seeking after God and everything else, I get to a point in my life where I get, um, I put myself with a performance-based theology of you do, you do, you do, and this is how God is going to reward you. And this is how God is going to do. You have to do this in order for this. And you have to do this in order for God to meet you here. And, and there's no, like, there's this constant struggle of here and here and here and here. And I have to do more because God wants to do more. And if God wants to do more in my life, then I have to do more. And so there's performance and there's always performance. And, and, and it's crazy because I can't hang with it. <laughs> I can't do, see, that's the, that's the point with performance-based theology, with, with those things, is you do, you do, you do, but then you realize one day that you don't know what to do anymore because there's nothing else you can do at all. And that's where the scandalous grace of Jesus comes. So there's no more doing. There's mass confusion in my head. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm completely wrecked, and then my life falls apart. I walk through just a bunch of things that um, I don't wish on anybody, and there's he brings me back to this place of just seek after me, be with me. And so I do. That was in 2012, so two years ago. So for the next two years, and I'm, I'm winding up, <laughs> I'm winding down, guys. The next two years of my life is just seeking after him and, and really finding out who I am and who he wants me to be and who Jesus is. And, and I found out that while there are things that he has commanded us to do, we do them out of love because everything that God wants to give you, he's already blessed you with because it all laid on the cross in the first place. Like everything that that he wants to give was released on the cross. And there's nothing that you can do to earn that. It's a free gift. And so here we are, 2014. Loving Jesus, understanding that my daddy loves me. And if I slip up, I'm not going to hell. <laughs> See, he paid that price. He paid for every sin. Don't get that wrong with, I'm going to go snort a bunch of cocaine, <laughs> do a bunch of drugs again and everything else. And Because, see, relationship is this, that I love you, and so I don't want to do those things anymore. Like, I don't want to go live an unfulfilling life because I have the king of the universe kicking it with me because he chose to because he wants to. And so now me and Jesus, we hang out and we talk. And and there's still temptations and there's still things to go do and, and things like that. And, but there's always the reminder that, hey, I don't want you to. And I love you because he loved me first. 
I'm not going to. But if I do, the Bible says that we have an intercessor pleading on our behalf, like Jesus is up in heaven next to Daddy on the right side saying, hey, Dad, it's good. Like, Michael messed up, but I know him, and I know his heart, and he can do the same. And so just closing remarks, guys, as far as that's kind of, that, that's my testimony, but closing remarks is if you are sitting here today and your face is in a pile of cocaine or, or pornography, click, 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 or, or just things like that, just know that the God of the universe, the dude who, who created it all, who said before the foundations of the earth were ever fulfilled or ever even spoken into existence, he said that he would come and he would take care of us because he knew we couldn't do it. And so if Jesus is calling on you and, and, and he's sharing with you and he's touching with you, then my suggestion is, is don't, don't run away from it because he's fulfilling. He is everything and he's amazing. He's a good daddy. He's a good friend. We're co-heirs with Christ because of what he's done for us. And, um, if you have questions on how to do that or you um, just don't know the next step as far as, okay, it's Jesus. Like, yeah, I accept that. What do I do now, Michael? Then you can absolutely email me at scandalousgrace777 at gmail.com and I would love to get with you and, and just share with you on, on what to do. But I hope that answers some of your questions as far as who I am and um, you know, there's, there's more to that story, but for time's sake, I just, you know, I'll cut it off there. Hope you guys have an amazingly blessed day. Hope you guys are great. And I just pray that the, the Holy Spirit would just fall on you and the peace that surpasses all understanding that he would just grab you and hold you and hug you and let you know that, that you're perfect in his eyes and he just wants to hang out. He's amazing. You guys have a fantastic Friday. Have a great weekend. Be blessed. Be safe. And I'll talk to you soon.